Now let's consider absolute value functions and their derivatives. Let's consider the parent absolute value function. Visually, we can see that this function is not differentiable at x equals zero due to the sharp corner. So even if it's not differentiable at x equals zero, we can still find the derivative for the other portions of the graph. As a piecewise function, f of x being equal to the absolute value of x is written as f of x is equal to negative x for x values less than or equal to zero, and it's equal to positive x for x values greater than zero. And its derivative, f prime of x, will be negative one for x values less than zero and positive one for x values greater than zero. The function is continuous, but since the slope is not the same from the left and right at zero, we do not include the equal to sign that appears in the regular function in its derivative, where the derivative does not exist. It's apparent that every absolute value function will have a sharp point, thus not being differentiable at that point. But again, we can still find the derivative of the absolute value function as long as it's not including that sharp point. We must also first write our function as a piecewise function by determining that turning point of the absolute value function. In other words, what makes the inside of the absolute value be zero. Find the derivative of y is equal to five times the absolute value of two x minus six and then plus three. The first step is to find the x value of the vertex or the turning point in our absolute value function. So what's inside the absolute value is that two x minus six and we're gonna set it equal to zero and solve for x. Well, if we add six to both sides and then divide both sides by two, we get that the x value will be three. Next, we rewrite the absolute value function as the piecewise function that it is. So that will be five times the negative of two x minus six or negative two x plus six being multiplied by five and then plus three. And that's for x values less than or equal to three. And then y will be equal to five times the quantity two x minus six plus three for x values greater than three. Next, we differentiate each function separately. So our first function, if we were to distribute and combine like terms, we get negative 10x plus 30 plus 3, so that's plus 33. And then for the bottom, it would be 10x minus 30 plus 3, that would be minus 27. So if we differentiate both of these with respect to x, we would get negative 10 and positive 10. And the negative 10 is only true now for x values being less than three. Remember, we remove that equal to sign because at that vertex, it is not differentiable. And then the inequality for the second half of our piecewise derivative remains the same because it didn't have an equal to sign in it. 